guys welcome back to another video today is gonna be a reading vlog I'm super excited to get into suburban hell by Maureen Kilmer I bought this I think I vlogged it it was one of my vlogtober videos um, when I was in st. Louis here's the the bookmark for the store that we were at I've literally been saying this bookstore wrong for like the entire time that I've been talking about it on YouTube, so that's great. I've been calling it Left Hand Books. It's not, it's Left Bank Books. So anyway, picked this up there. Hadn't heard of it before, but it looks like a very fun kind of light horror read. I think I mentioned in the video where I bought it that it reminds me of something Grady Hendrix would write, and I'm pretty obsessed with Grady Hendrix. So I'm pretty pumped for this. I do have a couple of errands that I need to run later today. I'm thinking about going on a few more apartment tours. I think that would be really fun. I've got quite a few on my list. So this isn't gonna be one of those like read as much as I can in 24 hours like challenge videos I'm not really super into those um, but I do want to try to get as much reading done as I can because my long weekend went by very quickly like they tend to do so I want to try to get as much reading done as I can today and feel like I accomplished something so let's get to it <laughs> Um, yeah, it's like 4 p.m. I don't know what happened. The day got away from me. I basically had to stop reading and go tour some apartments because I think I mentioned this earlier, but my lease is up in December, so I went to a few places. Definitely liked the places I've seen before today um, more. So there's that. Boyfriend and I are gonna discuss tonight and figure out where we might want to apply to. So I've gotten this far in the book. I am on chapter seven, page 59. Um, so that's where I'm at. I'm enjoying it so far. It just got interesting. So at about like 50 pages in, I would say last chapter, um, some, some things went down. Before I forget, I want to mention a trigger warning for animal abuse. I have a feeling we've just seen like a tiny little bit of it. I have a feeling that's gonna be in there even more so than what I've already seen. So yeah, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm vegetarian. So like you could say, I'm pretty sensitive to that sort of thing. I don't mind reading it. I kind of expect like if I'm reading like a horror book, even in something like this, that's light horror, I do expect to be horrified and to, you know, for things like that to come up, but just a fair warning if that's not really your thing. Um, so yeah, let's get back to reading.
I thought I would just give you a little update. I'm about to make myself some dinner um, and maybe watch a movie. I wanna see that new um, Florence Pugh movie. I forget the title, it has Darling in the title. I'll pop it up on the screen. Um, so I'm gonna make myself some dinner and watch a movie, but I wanted to give you a reading update. So super enjoying this. I'm getting through it pretty quickly. I'm like, I think I'm on chapter 13. I'm like 110 pages in so far. It's a lot of fun. I love how it's balancing the the horror and the humor. It's, it's balancing those really well. The final scene that just ended this chapter reminds me a bit of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, if you've ever seen Buffy, you know that before she goes up against like the big bad, she has to like go to the library and her and her friends like research um, how to, you know, basically how to take down the bad guy. And that's a scene that's very similar to that um, just happened at the end of this chapter. So that's really fun. Amy, the main character, goes to the library and checks out all these books on like demonic possession and then she takes them over to her friend's house and they read through them together to try to help their friend but they're like since they're like white suburban housewives they're like eating a charcuterie board and like drinking like bourbon and coffee or some weird mixture i don't know it's like the grown-up bougie suburban version of that if that makes any sense so i'm enjoying it so far it's pretty fun uh we'll see how it goes We have arrived. Boyfriend's putting on his waders. I've never been to this particular part of the park, so it'll be interesting to see. He says there's a bench for me to read on, so hopefully that's true. there I think it's called Cecil rope I bought him some of that from I think I bought it off Amazon um, a couple of weeks ago months ago I don't know it's been in the background of some of my videos if you guys are wondering why does she have green rope on her floor um, that is why I meant to make a cat scratcher out of it like a cactus shaped one I've seen some really cool ones online and just never got around to it um, but if you haven't noticed, I'm back home. No, I'm not day drinking. It's Welch's sparkling grape juice. I just like to drink it out of a fancy glass. It's something I've done ever since I was a kid. It just makes me feel, makes me feel fancy. I am about halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through my book. So while it is still pleasant outside, it's like 3 p.m., but there's a little bit of a breeze. My balcony faces north, so it's usually not crazy hot because it doesn't really get any direct sunlight. And Guillermo's headed out there right now, so he knows... 
he senses the vibe. But yes, I'm gonna pick my book back up and maybe, maybe, if I really speed read, I can finish it tonight. Alrighty folks, it is the evening. I've had dinner, I've showered, and I have 90 pages left of Suburban Hill. I am wanting to finish it. I don't know that I have the mental stamina, um, so we'll see how it goes. I may have to leave a couple chapters for tomorrow morning, so we'll see. should probably drink water first thing in the morning, but it's always a coffee. Good morning, guys. Excuse my morning voice. I literally just woke up. I wanted to give a review of the book while it's fresh on my mind. I finished Suburban Hell last night. My eyelids were fluttering closed. I was very tired. I didn't even get back up out of bed to brush my teeth. So I definitely wasn't about to try to film a review. So. Um, overall, I give it a four out of five stars. It's super accessible. It's not written in like a very literary way. It's very easy to read, um, which is probably how I was able to kind of skate through it in two days. Earlier I had mentioned it was something like Grady Hendrix might write. I would say that's true, but it was less scary, <laughs> definitely less scary um, than something he would write. When I say light horror, I mean very light horror. Like this is not going to scare you at all. So if you are into um, spooky season, but you're not really into spooky things, like you would rather read about, you know, these four women and their friendship and how they're able to um, possibly triumph over evil, then this one is for you. I would say if you are a fan of like Stephen King and like those really intense, actually scary books, you're probably gonna think this is like hilarious. It's definitely more supposed to be like comedic horror. There were a few scenes that I felt like were specifically like supposed to poke at the horror genre. For example, the character of Liz, she's the mom who becomes possessed. Um, the first time that they see her like walk across the yard up to one of their houses, she's like coming over they don't really know what for. There's like fog surrounding her. The main character, Amy, was like, every step she took, um, it was like it activated a fog machine, like kind of borderline cheesy. So overall it was very fun, um, but it was definitely very lighthearted. You're not gonna get scared. There wasn't really anything about it um, that made me think, you know, there would need to be a trigger warning for anything. Maybe animal cruelty, which I think I already mentioned that, um, but you see like the after of what happened. You don't see any actual violence happen. I could see this being a cute buddy read if you have a friend who is not really into scary things um, and gets scared very easily, but still wants to enjoy like the season, the spooky season and Halloween and October and all that. This would be a really fun buddy read. 
super quick, super easy. Um, but I will definitely be moving on to something a little bit more intense and a little bit more actually scary. I did start From the Neck Up by Aaliyah Whiteley. That one, she's known for like body horror, so I'm pretty excited to get into that one. It's short stories, so I may not finish that by the end of the month. I'm not really sure yet. I may actually read Grady Hendrix next. Um, we Sold Our Souls is one that I haven't gotten to. I've read like all his other stuff and for whatever reason, I just haven't managed to get to that one yet. So I'm thinking that might be my next reading vlog. No promises, but I think I might go pick it up off the shelf. You guys, let me know what you're reading for the month of October. Are you reading more lighthearted things or are you reading actually terrifying books? You guys, let me know. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.